This is watercolor 102. We're going to be reviewing three basic watercolor skills. Before we get started, you should have your watercolor pan with red, orange, yellow, red, orange, and yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, and black. You should have a big cup of clean, clear water, a little water cup for your individual washing, and a large water cup for dumping dirty water into and a palette for mixing your paints. When you get started, add a little bit of water, clean, clear water, into your individual mixing pan. Set it to the side where you're going to be working. If you're right-handed, on your right-hand side. If you're left-handed, on your left-hand side. You should also have a paper for blotting your brush as we go along. In watercolor 102, we're going to learn our three basic skills of dry on dry, wax resist, and wet on wet. Starting with wet on wet, I'm going to use two colors and blend them together using wet watercolors and wet water. I'm going to start with yellow. I'm going to moisten my yellow paint with the tip of my brush. Even though it's on the side here, I can still get enough out. I'm going to paint a nice rectangle of yellow. Notice I'm pulling my brush to the side. And add a little bit of water onto it so it's a nice watery area of yellow. I'm going to wash out my brush and moisten some blue paint in a nice circular motion with the tip of my brush. I'm going to make a wash of blue because blue is such a strong color that I want to lighten it up a little bit so it doesn't overpower my yellow. I'm going to start with my blue and paint a kind of rectangle shape underneath it. And then I'm going to get a little bit more pigment. I'm going to clean my brush out with some water. And I'm going to blend these two areas together. Notice it makes a kind of greenish color. And that is how you do wet on wet watercolor. You have wet paint on top, wet paint on the bottom, a wet brush, and you blend the two colors together. Wax resist is when you have some kind of crayon or other wax media and watercolor. The wax will push away the watercolor and leave the wax underneath. So I'll we'll start with a nice wash of blue over the top of my crayon. And you'll notice when I paint over the top of this the blue crayon doesn't show up too well. It's all right, but not great. My yellow crayon shows up very nicely. So does my red and white, because they are contrasting colors, and they show up very nicely. Likewise, you'll notice that where I pushed hard with my black crayon, it showed up very nicely. But where I pushed softly, or not a lot of pressure, the watercolor kind of overpowered my crayon. I'm going to get some yellow as well and paint the yellow on top of this. And you'll see likewise how now the yellow does not show up very well. But conversely, the blue shows up nicely. The magenta or red violet shows up nicely. Our last watercolor skill is dry on dry. You'll notice I've already painted an area of red here, and it's had time to dry. I'm going to go back, and since my blue is moistened already, I'm going to go back with a dry brush, dry and clean brush, and get a little dry blue pigment on the tip of my brush and paint on the top of my red area. Notice that the color doesn't run or pool together like it did here on our wet on wet example, but that this is a great way to make detailed lines over an area that has already been painted. And the watercolor won't run, won't change, and you can get a nice, clean, clear line. Depending on your pigment load, you can also completely cover the original color, or you can let some of that original color make uh, show through and almost do some visual mixing of your colors. That concludes our watercolor demonstration watercolor 102.